Hello and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I want to talk about swapping icons with Instant Swap. So Figma has added this neat feature which allows us to quickly create complex components for our design system. Previously I made a video called Swapping Icons with Variant, but this is kind of an upgrade to that feature which allows us to still have that drop down to select different icons but we can also access the swap instance functionality of searching for an icon, which is beneficial for large icon libraries. Before I show you how to set up the component, I want to talk about what is instance swap. So as the name suggests, essentially you're adding a property that allows you to swap out an instance in your component. So let me demonstrate with this component here, we have a main component. So I'm just going to draw out this search icon first. So every time you have an instance component, you can tell it's an instance because it has that hollow purple diamond in the layers panel. Every time you have an instance, you have this property called swap instance, which is in the properties panel on the right side. You can see drop down swap instance and allows me to swap for any instance in your file. So I can go for, you know, this other purple square. I can go for these orange squares. So this is kind of like indicating an icon library. I can go ahead and change that. Or I can even swap it out for just other random components. So like I can swap it out into this large button, which I would never do, but you have the ability to do that. So why am I demonstrating this? So originally before this property, the way that you would change the instance is you would have another button. So this is um, a button that's an instance. You can see it's the uh, hollow diamond again. You would select on the icon and then you would swap out the instance. So I'd go ahead and select this orange 12. Right? You don't want to do that because you have to always go onto that specific layer to control it. By adding instance swap, you can bring that property to the parent layer. So I'm going to go ahead and delete this and I'm going to copy the button again. So now without double clicking onto that search icon, I can just select on the component and I can see all the properties that I've added. So right now I only have one property, which is my swap instance property. You won't know this, but um, I've set it up and I've called it icon. And essentially I can see the swap instance property over here and I can click on it and change it to orange 12, which just affects the icon here. So what's the benefit of doing this? Like I said, you can control it from the parent layer. You can see all the properties that you want to control and you can control what instances you want a user to pick by setting preferred instances. So not only can I search all instances, I can set preferred instances, which is really handy. Let's say you have a user jumping on your file and they want to add another button. They can see which icons you would want them to use. So right now I've limited them to only the search icon and this rabbit icon. So now I'm going to go ahead and show you how to build a component with instance swap. The first thing we need to do is build our icon library. If you have an icon library already that you're working with, feel free to jump on to the next section, but otherwise follow along. We have four key principles that we're trying to follow when building our icon library. First one, we need icons set to the same size. By having them at the same size, when we swap them in and out, it doesn't change the size of our component. We need to make our icons into their own components as this is how we activate the swap instance feature. We need icons with clear names as this is a way to allow users to quickly find the icon they are looking for. And we also need to group icons to make them easily searchable. Even though we can set preferred icons later, in case someone wants to look at your full set of icons in your library, by creating them in a folder, you allow users to quickly find them. Let's begin making our icon library. You might be starting from scratch or working with an existing library, but the same steps should apply. We have two vectors here. You can see they're currently at different sizes. So what you want to do is if you're starting from scratch, you've got to decide what your icon sizes will be. But because I'm working with an existing library, I can just go ahead and check the sizes. So here are some squares that indicate potentially other icons I might have. 
and it's set to 24 by 24 pixels. So with this vector, I don't want it to stretch to 24 by 24 because it will make a weird proportion between my vectors. You can see this is kind of a nice size. So what I want to do instead is I just want to make a padding box to form the shape of 24 by 24 pixels. So the way that you do that is you go right click, add auto layout or shift A as the shortcut. If you don't know what auto layout does, it just controls spacing between your elements and the padding around. Because we only have one element in each auto layout, the spacing pretty much does nothing. And we can go ahead and override this padding. So I'm gonna go in my properties panel, instead of hugging the element, I'm gonna go fix width to override it. And then in the width, I'm gonna hit 24, tab to jump to the next field and 24. Now you can see I've built my bounding boxes and I want the elements inside to always be in the center. So I'm gonna hit center alignment. Now with my OCD in check, I'm gonna move these to the grid. Perfect. Next thing we wanna do is make them into components. So I'm gonna go ahead and select both my frames. And I don't wanna click on this, create component. What that does is it makes the entire selection one component which is not what we want to do. So I'm going to go undo. What you want to do instead is click on this tiny drop down here, create multiple components. What this means is you're telling Figma, every frame I have in my selection, make it a separate component. So now we have our two components here and I can go ahead and rename these. My advice for renaming is try to keep it as concise as possible because a long name is quite hard to read even though it might be helpful for the search and i can go ahead and change this one to be rabbit to find it later the last thing you want to do is you want to group them into a folder because even though like i said you can set preferred um, icons maybe someone wants to look at all the icons in your library so in figma to group things into a folder you just got to wrap it in a frame so I can hit F or I can select this button for frame. I can go ahead and wrap all my icons and I'll call this name or this frame icon. So you're essentially calling the folder icon. To demonstrate this, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this component. So we have an instance here. Like I said, when you, when you have an instance component, you can do the swap instance command and you can see everything is in the icon folder. So I can click out of it and you can see I have a folder here called icon and here are all the elements I've placed in that frame. With our icon library set up, we can now go ahead and create our component. So I've copied across the search icon that we just created and you can see it's an instance component. So I'm gonna go ahead and add some text and I'm gonna call it um, loss wow rabbit. And I have no idea why this is the default text and I'm too lazy to change it. But we'll just go SF compact um, 100%. Let's just make it a bit smaller. 0% is fine. Maybe a regular font. And we want the fill to be the same color as the icon. And now I can select my icon and my text and make it into an order layout. And the reason I want to make it an order layout is because I want to control that spacing between the icon and the text and also the padding around. So I'm going to add a fill. And now I'm just going to play with some settings. I'm going to use, um, let's say, I want the padding on the sides to be a bit more. And the top and bottom, I can just set it to eight. So now it's a good number. We have the height at 40. Um, feel free to pick whatever size you want. I'm just kind of demonstrating a button creation. We can even add, let's just add a shadow. Um, so I want it to stem from the center. And eh, that's good enough for now. So with our button, we can go ahead and create a component. So the way that we set up these properties is we would have to double click on this icon. And essentially there are two properties that you can add. 
So what I said at the start was you can select your parent layer and see all the properties that you've created. There are two properties, for now at least, that you can add. So with the instance selected, anything with this diamond and that little, you know, I don't even know what that is, like a black line with a dot. Um, it says you can create an instance swap property. Or you can also see it here, create a Boolean property. So I won't cover this, but essentially a Boolean property is, Boolean just means yes or no. So this is really handy for turning things on and off. So let's say you want to build a, um, a button without the icon or you want to turn the icon off, you can add that. But for now, we will just focus on the swapping button feature. So I'm going to go ahead and create instance swap property. And we can call it icon. And I can go create property. So what does that mean now? So that when I have a instant component of that button, I can see icon is created and I can search and see all of the icons in the icon folder. So it's by default showing me the icon folder because the original component was set in the icons folder, but obviously I can change to anything else as well. Hopefully that demonstration was easy to follow. I want to conclude by showing three additional properties for instance swap. The first one is how to set preferred instances. So like I said, we want to set primary icons for users to use when using our components. I'll show you how to deactivate the instance swap property. And something interesting happens when you do that. And the last one is how to delete an instance swap property. So deactivating and deleting are two different things. So I'm going to go ahead and go back to our component. So this is the component I created before with the four purple diamonds here that indicates that this is our main component. And I'm going to go ahead and create an instance of that. So the way that we can control the properties of our swap instance or our instance swap, sorry, we want to select on the icon and we can see our property here. So when we left click it, all we can do is create properties or change the property we want to use. So currently we only have one property because we only have one thing we want to swap. So you can't do that or you can't do anything for now. But what you want to do instead is go right click, go to property and it will open the modal where we can edit the property. I'm going to close out of this. Another way you can do it is just select on the main component itself on the parent layer. We can see all the properties here and there are two things we can do. We can delete the property or edit the property. So we're just going to go edit. And we can see there are a few things we can do in this modal. We can change the name. So I've left an icon for now. We can set the default value, which is we want it to display the search icon. And we can set preferred values. So I'm going to go ahead and press this plus button to add additional preferred values. And we have this search bar, which is really handy. I'm going to go ahead and select rabbit. And I'm going to check that. And you can see it's added rabbit to our preferred values. So now we're in our instance component and applying that property. We can go to our properties panel. In the drop down, we can now see search and rabbit. So if you were listening before in setting up our icon libraries by setting up our folder called icon, we can change this drop down from preferred to local components. And now we can see all the components within our file. So that's an easy way to override that preferred setting. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go ahead and select this instant again. And I'm going to change it to the rabbit icon. So now I want to show you how to detach the property. So again, we need to make all the changes in our main component. So I'm going to select our main component. And the way that we would detach is selecting that icon itself because it's applied to this icon. So in this section where the pill is, we have this new icon, which is detach property. And something interesting happens. When we detach the property, the icon of our instances revert back to what it was originally, which is the search icon. However, if we were to bring it back, so let's say we go add the property again. When we click add 
or apply instance swap property, we can see the property that we created before wasn't actually deleted. It was just unapplied. So now we can select icon. And again, our instant prop, um, instance component has remembered what changes were applied within that property, which is really handy. This might be a good way to create different options um, for your client. But yeah, this is a really handy tool. And the last thing I want to show you is how to delete a instance swap property. The way that you would do that is you would just select the parent layer of the main component. In the properties panel, we can go delete property. And obviously, if you were to delete the property, it would revert all your instant components back to what it was originally to match the main component. Now that you've learned how to build components where you can swap in and out icons, go forth and conquer. You've learned one of the building blocks to create more complex components. In a future video, I will demonstrate the other features. And there are also a lot of beta features in the works by Figma. But that's all for now. Stay hydrated, take a break, rest your eyes, and I'll see you all next time.